Welcome to Fit Strong Women Over 50, episode number 23. Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome back to Becoming Ellie's podcast. This is the place where women over 50 inspire each other to become fit and strong. Hi, I'm Jill. Wondering who Ellie is? She's the North's goddess of aging who beat Thor in a wrestling match. We decided we wanted to be like Ellie, fit and strong. Feel free to join our community of women at the Becoming Ellie Facebook group. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, too. Hey, we have a giveaway for one of our listeners today. All you have to do is en- to enter is leave us a message on the Becoming Ellie website or call our new voicemail number, 330-970-6662. You can also find a link on our website for that number. We're giving away a bar of soap made by today's speaker, Heather Lentz, to one person who leaves us a message or calls by the end of December 2018. We'll announce the winner in a January episode. This giveaway is a wheatgrass cleansing bar. It's a four-ounce bar made with organic superfoods. The list of ingredients looks good enough to eat. Heather discusses her small business in today's episode. Check the show notes for a link to her website. Heather Lentz is a certified holistic health practitioner and food wellness advisor and good food advocate. She is the director of wellness for a well-respected green grocery store with 23 stores across Northeast Ohio and the Chicago metro area. Heather is also the founder and director of product development for Koi Gourmet Skin Care. As a former cancer research technologist turned wellness leader and formulator of gourmet skin care, Heather has developed a unique perspective about food and its impact on the human body. She has come to believe that just as we need to pay close attention to what we put in our bodies for optimal health and wellness, we need to pay equal attention to what we put on our bodies. Heather is an AADP Certified Health Coach from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. She also attended a graduate level program in public health from the Consortium of Eastern Ohio. Heather is a self-described super foodie, and when she's not coaching up her super team of wellness consultants, you can find her slinging her soaps, creating new skincare products, trying out a special new recipe, competing in a Spartan event, or checking out the hottest restaurants in the cities where she travels. Join us as we talk with Heather about food, diets, her position as Director of Wellness for a Green Grocery, and her food quality skincare products. Let's go to the podcast. Thank you, Heather, for joining us on our podcast today. We know that you're a health coach and the director of wellness for a local grocery store chain. Yes. Can you tell us exactly what that means, being a health coach and and director of wellness? Yeah, and th- thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I'm the director of wellness for a, a what I like to call a green grocer in Northeast Ohio. So that it is a conventional grocery store, but they do focus a lot on healthy food items. So a lot of food items you could find at Whole Foods. and But yet you can still also get your bag of Doritos if you want it. <laughs> I like that term, green grocery. <laughs> yeah. So in all of our grocery stores, we have wellness centers or, or wellness resource centers rather, and they are all staffed with one to two wellness consultants. And so I manage those centers meaning I buy the mix. You know, uh, I'm a buyer. So I, I buy by the, the mix that we have, the vitamin supplements, proteins, powders, greens, superfoods, things like that. And then I also oversee the consultants and as, as their leader, I don't, I don't manage them, but what I do is I motivate and inspire them to do what they do best, which is help our customers on their wellness journey. And so I provide educational opportunities for them to keep up to date on health and wellness topics, health and wellness trends and things like that. And really just bring us together as a team to exchange best practices and ideas when it comes to working in a grocery store and and having a wellness center in a grocery store and selling those types of products in the grocery store. Because not everybody is going to the grocery store daily to, you know, buy a top of protein powder or 
a whole food based calcium supplement, you know, they're going to get milk and eggs and things. So right. it's a little bit of a different thing that we're doing. We're very innovative and, um, you know, we'd like to feel that we're leading that initiative in the Midwest. And, you know, we also have a, a chief medical officer, a local physician who is a holistic physician. He doesn't prescribe any medications. He prescribes food and supplements. So we have a partnership with him and he he has guided us along this journey. We've been partnered with him for, I think, seven years now. And he's been very helpful as far as helping me figure out good product mis- mix to bring in. But, you know, we believe we're the pharmacy of the future because we believe that the food is medicine. So, you know, it made total sense to our executive team that we would have wellness in the grocery store. But it is a little bit of a square peg in a round hole. And so it's certainly a journey that is not easy. You know, my team is our change agents and it's hard to be a change agent. And as their leader, I am responsible to motivate and inspire them on this, on this journey. Not only as being a change, change agent in the grocery store and retail, but again, also in doing what they do best, which is serving our customers and helping them on their wellness journey, whatever that might be. Okay. Wow. Great. Thank you. So you made a major career change a few years ago, I understand. Can you tell me you know, what prompted that and how has your life changed as a result? I did. I So my entire, since I've worked uh, 17 years old, I worked in hospitals. I worked in the clinical laboratories, research laboratories. It was all medicine, all science. Did that for 17 years. And what changed was I was working in a research laboratory and I lost my job. And so, I, but I always wanted to, while I knew I was creating or having an impact rather working in a research laboratory, I wanted to, it was a cancer research laboratory. I wanted to have an impact on those people before they got the cancer diagnosis. Ah. And knowing that food can heal or destroy, I knew that, and plus being a foodie, you know, I knew that my moving forward, I knew that I needed to have some type of career that involved food, that involved wellness. And I always believed that wellness should be in the grocery store because it made total sense to me. I mean, I believe that food is medicine. I used food to treat myself. I can probably count on two feet, two, not two fingers, two hands, the number of times I've been to the doctor in, in my, in all my years of living. So I started to write letters to local grocery stores that were near where I was living at the time saying, I think you should do this. I think you should put wellness in your grocery store. And I kind of laid out a plan how I, what I believe they should do it and why. And I got phone calls from these grocery stores at the at their headquarters and I'd go and have meetings and stuff like that. And, you know, it was a very foreign concept. And this was only five, about five years ago. And it was such a foreign concept, like, ah, oh, we like it, but we're just not sure. We think it's risky. And then I stumbled upon the grocery store that I work at now. I was looking for jobs online and I saw a position open and it wasn't the director, but it was for one of the consultants. And, and I thought, Oh, this is probably going to be a total waste of time. I'm going to apply for it anyway. So I don't normally just follow the herd and just apply and be done with it. I applied online as it told me to, but then I also dug around and found names of key people in the company and wrote them letters. And I said, I just applied for the wellness consultant position you know, I really believe wellness should be in the grocery store, so on and so forth, and kind of propose, you know, like a made up, like a made a pitch to them. Uh-huh. Well, next thing you know, I get a call from the CEO of the grocery store, and um, I was in his office, and he was explaining everything that they were doing in wellness. And I looked at him, and I said, "You stole my idea." <laughs> <laughs> I, this, I said, "This is what I've always believed should be in the grocery store," and and I explained to him how I pitched this to other grocery stores because this was this was a, an hour and a half away from where I was living. So, you know, I told him I had pitched the grocery stores in my area. Uh-huh. And so in the end, I got hired as a wellness consultant. And, and as they grew the department and grew that initiative with the company, they decided they needed a director and held, held interviews. And so I interviewed and, and told them what I would do for them in that position and how I would take the company from point A to point B. And uh, they gave me the job. And uh, so it's been my life since has been amazing. I mean, I am thankfully 
one, unfortunately, of very few people who can say that they love their job. I love going to my job and it's, it's rewarding. I mean, I, I, I do a lot of leadership. I'm very passionate about leadership. So it, it's been a very self, interestingly, it's been very self-reflective to lead a team of people, a team of 30 some people. Oh, wow. And it's, you know, it's not about you. It's about them. And uh, it's just, it's been a very cool experience. But And then the other part of that is being able to be surrounded by really great food, <laughs> uh, <laughs> quality food, you know, quality to me, food quality is of utmost importance. I believe that to eat, to live well, you have to eat well. I'm very fortunate that with this grocery store that I work for, that is our main goal is to provide the best. And so that's what we do. And we believe that because of that process, because we know our source of our product and things like that, we feel like that is just as important to health as it is just eating the good, you know, the the quality, healthy food. So yeah, it's been a, it's been crazy. I mean, I never would have thought that being in grad school for getting my degree in biology that I would someday end up working for a grocery store, but <laughs> Here yeah. I am. <laughs> and the health coach was also a, a program you went through at the same time, or around the same yeah. time. Yeah, that was completed, um, I think, just before I started working in the grocery store. That was a 13-month program through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And it's a holistic, basically a holistic wellness coach program, or holistic health coach, rather. I'm sorry, right. holistic, health, holistic health coach program. A 13 month long program and you learn a overview of major body systems. You learn about tons and tons of diets, you know, from that grapefruit diet to the three day, whatever to Atkins to, you know, whatever is going on today. So it's, uh, it, you know, it's interesting and you learn all kinds of different ways of feeding yourself, whether it's literal food you're putting in your mouth or whether it's food for your mind or food for your soul, because it, all that matters right. when it comes to your health. Right. It's not just about the food that you put in your mouth right. or into your body rather, but what you're consuming with your mind, what you're consuming in your heart. I mean, all that in your environment, all that makes a difference. So Heather, as you said, there are lots of different ways of eating. And right now it seems to evoke very strong emotions in people. So I mean, I'm thinking about people who are vegan or keto, following the keto diet or paleo. What do you recommend or do you have any thoughts on these different ways of eating? I have a lot of thoughts. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I recommend people eat in a way that's right for them. Uh, I think that vegan is fantastic. I don't think anybody would argue with the idea of eating more plants and eating more pl fruits and vegetables. Um, but I also know that people don't always thrive on a vegan diet. And so it's not for everybody. Right. And I know that there's people that would argue that, but I have witnessed through health coaching and opportunities, people, not everybody thought thrives on a completely plant-based diet. Um, however, if, if you are somebody who thrives on it, by all means, I would never sway you in any other direction. Uh, same thing with paleo. People will say it's repurposed Atkins and so on and so forth. Yeah, sure. That's fine. It is. But it's a little bit healthier in the sense that they don't have you consuming processed foods and it is a little bit more rooted in vegetables and things like that. Right. I do think I don't know. I don't, I personally don't think it's sustainable in the long run, just like Atkins, Atkins wasn't, you know, I think it, I think it'll have a good run until someone else tweaks it a little bit and has this new style of eating. And now then it'll be the repurposed paleo, but you know, but those are my personal opinions. Um, again, I think that there is no one way to eat for everybody. And I do, and I don't think there's really a wrong way to eat. I think what the problem is, is when we obsess too much about it is what gets us into trouble. And I find that to be the biggest hurdle today is that we think way too much about food. We give food way too much power. And uh, I think that's what gets us into trouble. And a lot of it starts with body image. We feel like we have to 
look a certain way. And so to achieve that look, we get obsessive. We get obsessive about food. We cut out entire food groups. We, you know, do all these things. We obsessively exercise and and really all that you're doing is just being a hamster in a wheel and just spinning and spinning and spinning. And some people do this and they find that they gain weight, you know, and and really and the problem is the cycle is that you you're you're causing you're stress you're obsessing, you're stressing about it. Stress releases hormones and those certain hormones do things that will keep the weight on or cause you to gain weight. So I mean it's just a it's just a nasty, vicious cycle that we are in as a as a society, in my opinion. I think it's way out of hand. And I think that what we're going to find is, I, I think that we have a lot of disordered eating as a society, and I think that we need to get out of that. And I don't know the solution exactly, but I think that part of the solution is to not give food so much power, meaning if I eat this, then you know I can lose weight. Or if I eat this, I can go ahead and have that brownie, but I need to make sure I run an extra mile on the treadmill. Or, you know, we, we put all these rules and stipulations on eating. And then that and then what ends up happening is happening is that food controls us. So that's where people come in with if I eat this is bad food. I'm gonna eat mm-hmm. I ate something bad. Yep. Yeah, correct. I ate something bad. So th- so what happens when you eat something bad, you feel guilty, you stress out about it, and all those are releasing hormones and things, you know, inside physiologically. And then what do you do? Well, then you go, well, screw it. I, I messed up. I might as well just eat everything that's not nailed down now. And then so you eat a bunch of food, you, you binge on it, and then you feel bad because you ate so much food or, or you go and you run, you know, 10 miles or whatever, because of that brownie that you ate that you're feeling so guilty about, or that bad food that you ate. You know, they're really, I don't believe in good foods and bad foods. If you want to have, you know, the, actually last month, for whatever reason, I don't even know why, but I was craving Popeyes. And which is weird because I haven't had Popeyes since I was a kid living in Texas. Popeyes, like the chicken place? Fry, yeah, Popeyes fried chicken. Okay. And, and I was like, man, why am I craving it? So I just sort of let it go. I kept like the next, it was like three days in a row. I'm like, I finally I said, oh, I'm just going to go get it. <laughs> so I did. And I just got a, I just got a meal. It was like a three piece chicken tender meal with um, rice and fries. And I oh know rice and green beans and a biscuit and it was so good. And I ate it and I was done and there was no emotion attached to it. There was no, Oh my God, I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to have to work out double tomorrow or tomorrow. I got to fast to make up for this probably 1600 calorie <laughs> a fried, fried food <laughs> fest. I just ate, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but I didn't, I didn't do any of that. There was no emotion surrounding it. I enjoyed every morsel of it. And I didn't overdo it or underdo it. I just ate it and enjoyed it. And then I went on about my day. And unfortunately, we just don't do that anymore with food. We, you know, we label things as good or bad and and we can't even enjoy it because we're so worried about what it's going to do to us. It it consumes us. Hmm. That's a good point. So we talked a little bit. You, you kind of uh, got my interest going when we were talking earlier about food and wellness with your role in the grocery store. And, you know, you said that food is medicine. I was wondering what kind of questions that you get at the, the grocery store and, you know, what kind of foods do you consider medicines? Yeah, that's a good question. We get a lot, actually, of people with allergies. Food allergies are just... Mm. on the rise. Okay. And interestingly, we get some really, besides the gluten or nut allergy, we get really interesting allergies. Like I met, that's where the first, you know, being in the grocery store was the first time I ever heard of people who can be allergic to fruits and vegetables. I'm thinking, that's so weird to me. I have a friend who is allergic. I almost did him in because I cut an apple on a (laughs) cutting board that I had also cut an onion on. And the juice from the onion was enough on that apple wow. that he had horrible reaction. Wow. I, I felt I felt terrible because, you know, I, I felt like I, I almost I almost <laughs> killed someone with an with a apple with an onion <laughs> yeah. with an onion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. So I definitely learned a lot in the grocery store, but but yeah, food allergies. Um, is a big, big thing that we get uh, customers need help with navigating because, you know, they get diagnosed with a certain diagnosis and then 
all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't know what to eat because of what I've been eating, I can't eat anymore. So I believe, I mean, honestly, what I believe to be what food I believe is medicine is fruits and vegetables. I mean, if you look at uh, greens, greens are the most powerful food anybody can eat. A pound of greens is hands down the most nutritious food you can possibly eat. And so whether that's kale, spinach, collard greens, Swiss chard, dandelion greens, I mean, greens, lettuces, uh, not iceberg lettuce, but <laughs> the <laughs> spring mixes and things like that, red lettuces. I mean, those are absolutely amazing, amazing foods because it has all the chlorophyll in it. And, you know, I mean, they're, greens are healing. I'm a huge, huge advocate for greens. So I would say if you're looking at like food as medicine, definitely greens. But as an overall answer, for sure, fruits and vegetables okay. are wonderful healing foods. And what kind of advice do you try to give to your customers when they're coming, you know, to the grocery store asking questions? Well, we like to meet people where they are. And because as a human being, it never works to say, well, you got to stop eating this and eat that. Because the moment you try to say you can't have that, it's human psychology, you're going to want that. And you're going to obsess about it until you get that. So we don't ever tell anybody, stop eating this, stop eating that. What we do is we add in good foods. Uh, well, there we go, that good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to, though. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Um, so we add in we add in nutritious foods. And uh, so what happens is that the, the nutritious foods begins to crowd out the bad, uh, the not so nutritious foods. So if someone is coming in and maybe, let's say, they are um, – consuming um what do you think we could call doritos bad food <laughs> yeah yeah a doritos daily or you know perhaps even you know what let's just do food in a box and okay box boxed foods like it's like packaged foods packaged foods. what you mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. packaged yeah. foods and and I mean, and don't get me wrong, they've come a long way. And in, in some cases, some of those are reasonable if you're in a pinch, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't have time to cook or something. But I would never rely on those for uh, daily. Right. But it, but if someone comes in and they're, and they're regularly consuming packaged foods and, and so, you know, those are loaded with preservatives and different types of food chemicals, if you will, things that actually will cause you to become addicted to them. So big food companies spend a lot of money and time with food scientists who spend a lot of time trying to find flavors that will get you addicted to their products so that you come back to them over and over and over again, continually buy that product. And that's pretty common in packaged foods. And would you say that, excuse me, would mm -hmm. you say that's addicted like the from the taste and how it is in your mouth or addicted like your whole body's addicted to it? I mean, how yeah. do you mean when you say addicted? Yeah, like a, the food taste in your mouth. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there, I mean, big companies hire food scientists to duplicate flavors that the human population is attracted to and to create them stronger, put them in these products so that you want that taste over and over again. Oh, okay. And so you'll continue to buy that product because you want that taste. So if we have somebody, for example, they're continually consuming uh, packaged goods, then, you know, it's hard to, you have to meet them where they want to be met. You have to meet them where they are. And so to take somebody from packaged foods, packaged goods to a completely whole foods, that's a, you don't make that big jump. You stare stuff. And how you do that is you say, how about we add, one salad a day to your meal. And that's it. One salad. So maybe it's a handful of spring mix or something like that. Or even, you know, honestly, a bite of arugula of all things. Just grab some arugula with your fingers and put some in your mouth. Believe it or not, those bitter greens will um, not will change your palate and your it wow. is actually good for your digestion. So, I mean, you don't it doesn't have to be this mega huge, you know, jump you have to make. That's why a lot we fail at a lot of this stuff because we think there's this, it's this big, such a big change. And it's not, it's just a handful of arugula in your mouth or a little spring mix salad or something. So you start them there. And the next thing you know, they start to feel differently, you know, you, and then you just keep adding those nutritious foods and it gets to the point where you don't even want the packaged goods anymore because 
the whole foods are tasting better to you. And it takes, it takes time. I remember when I switched from the processed uh, peanut butters, like, um, like Peter Pan, Jif, stuff like that, uh, back before natural Jif existed and all that. I remember when I switched from that to natural peanut butter, that was just the nuts and the natural oil. And it, I mean, it was just, it was hard. It was really hard because it tasted so different, but now I wouldn't, I, wouldn't want it any other way. I mean, I love natural peanut butter. I do too. Natural nut butter. So yeah, it takes, it takes a little bit of time to switch your taste buds over from what they're used to, but it's definitely, it's definitely doable. And, um, but that's where we start, you know, we, we start recommending just adding in the nutritious foods. And then from there, it, it's about adding, um, Oh, eating a rainbow of fruits and vegetables. You know, sometimes we tend to stick with one vegetable, maybe it's a carrot or a potato or something, but if you, if you get the rainbow fruits and vegetables, it kind of, you want to do that because every color represents a pigment and every pigment is an antioxidant. And so, and those antioxidants are what keeps you healthy. It fights the free radicals and free radicals, they sound fun, right? It's like you picture a free <laughs> radical. At the yeah. Yay. Like free love. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like at Woodstock, you know, flashing the peace sign, you know, it's a free radical, but free radicals are actually not a good thing. So free radicals, they're around us all the time. You can't stop them. If they're in the environment, that polluted air you breathe, the uh, water, contaminated water, you know, all that processed foods, those are all free radicals, but antioxidants are the guys that grab the free radicals and, and render them enable to wreak havoc on your health. And so, so that's why you want a rainbow of colors. You know, you want a rainbow of colors of, of vegetables, you know, orange, red, yellow, purple, white, all of it. Right. Then finally, through that journey, you know, mm -hmm. sourcing is important. Knowing the source of your food, especially, especially, I'm definitely a stickler on the meats. If you're going to consume meat, you want it to become, you want it to come from a healthy animal. And you know that because either the grocery store you work for knows that story, it's important to them and they can tell you that story, or maybe you're going to a farmer's market or to a farmer and they can tell you how your food was raised. And I think that's very important because you're eating that animal <laughs> and you want to know what they were eating and, and uh, how they were treated. So, right. Right. So would that be grass fed meat or what, what should we actually look for in meat? Well, I think optimal, I mean, yes, grass fed, pastured. Some people call it pastured. Okay. Um, I think local meats are important because you're all consuming the same land. That makes sense. Right. Um, not that getting meat, for example, from California is bad, but if you get a local, if you live in Ohio and you get a local Ohio meat, you know, that animal is in the same environment that you are consuming from the same land that you are. And it's just a little bit more symbiotic with our physiology when we consume local products, whether it's fruits, local fruits and vegetables or local meat. But so to me, optimal is like a local pastured meat. Okay. If that's not available, if a local's not available, then definitely a pastured meat, a grass-fed beef. You'll see that a lot. They come from New Zealand, Australia, because they have the land to graze cows that can feed a lot of people. We yeah. don't really have that kind of land in the United States. And yeah, I would say those are your top things to look for. This is an aside, but I was just listening to another podcast where they were talking about using cattle to so to avoid using pesticides on crops. They're using these sort of traditional crop raising methods, and then the way to reduce the weeds or the is to bring in between plantings. They bring in animals to eat them, eat the stuff, and it fertilizes the ground and they're having some success out in the plains in sort of keeping in doing a more natural farming kind of thing. So that's, I just, interesting. yeah. So they're using yeah. the cattle and, or lambs or what have you to clean up the weeds, yeah. but also fertilize yes. the, the and, field. And in doing that, they're not having to dig up the topsoil as much, because they're just, it has to do with how they're farming. 
and um, it's actually sort of a, th a thought on how they're going to how we're as a country we're going to have healthier meat and vegetables with with fewer pesticides. Nice. Was that that wasn't was that Polyface Farms? No, I don't. Well, you know, I don't know what the name of the farm was. It was a um, so I heard it on a Dr. Hyman podcast. He has that pharmacy podcast, F A R M, and they were talking about it on there. One of his guests. I wonder if it was the same because there's a guy, there's a farmer. I forget his name, but it's Polyface Farms in um, I want to say the Shenandoah Valley, and so he he switches animals in the in the field and so for example the cows will be out and they'll graze the grass right, right. and so when they when they can no longer graze the grass because they've eaten all of it um because they only take the top portion of grass and then he moves them to the next section of the field and then he brings in the chickens and the chickens eat the cow poop and and then that and then the chickens poop it's like this interesting little <laughs> Cycle. Yeah, and yeah. He just does that all, moves them all to quadrants of the. Uh, well, it sounds very similar. I don't think it's the field. same farm because the the guy that this was was out in the like Nebraska or someplace. Oh, okay. But yeah, but still, it's a very similar idea and yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, it sounds like that's something to look for, but I don't know how to find that information in the grocery store. I mean, how do you know what information? You know, um, how if it's a field that they've rotated the um, livestock and that type of thing? Oh, well, you I mean, have you're to... just basically looking for grass fed beef. Yeah. Is that... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause not, not every beef comes from Shenandoah Valley from that polyface farm. So, um, but yeah, you're, it'll, it should say, you know, it should say grass fed or local grass fed or, um, sometimes they say pasture, but not really. Usually it's grass fed. Organic is another one. So organic means that the animals were fed organic feed and there's no, they don't spray any pesticides or anything like that on the grass so that they are not consuming pesticides when they eat the grass. Okay. Um, and so organic meat's another one to look for. But for me, first look for local grass fed, then grass fed, then, you know, your organic, just because, you know, with your organic, that's one of those like iffy labels where, you know, you're not really sure how much pasture time they got. Right. So you just know they were fed organic feed, which is great because, you, again, you know, if you're eating them, you want them to be eating healthy. So those are the optimal labels that you want to look for. And you're not going to know where the cow came from unless you ask the butcher and the butcher knows, you know, where the grocery store gets their meat from. Yeah. Heather, our listeners are primarily women over 50 who are interested in being fit and healthy. What kind of specific advice would you give us? Is there anything different we should be doing as women over 50? As, as far as fitness goes? Well, or eating or, or fitness or anything. I mean, is there, like, if we were coming, came into your store or if we were talking to you as, as a health coach type person, what would you, is there anything specific we need to do differently? And it's okay to say no. <laughs> well, generally the answer is no. Okay. Um, I mean, but I would say, because I don't know what you're doing, I would say make sure that you are enjoying life and not obsessing about food, not obsess obsessing about weight, not obsessing about all these things that as women we've spent all of our lives doing since we were young girls, you know, that became aware of our bodies and you know, it just gets tiring after a while. You get tired of worrying about weight and food and things like that. And, and, and so my advice to what to do differently is to stop worrying about that kind of stuff and enjoy life. I mean, it's really hard to have a big, fat, juicy, fabulous life when you're worried about food, you know, but I mean, really, you know, balance, lots of water. I mean, water is very important. Water keeps the skin hydrated. Water keeps your organs hydrated. Water can work wonders. And, uh, you know, beyond that, eat what's enjoyable to you, eat what nourishes your body and what you eat the most, you crave the most. So if you eat a lot of greens, guess what? You're going to crave a lot of greens. And um, so, yeah, I would say that that's the advice I would give. Okay. So that's what it means that when I feel like I just don't want to eat certain foods, it means I probably haven't been eating them. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, that's a good that's very interesting. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your health coaching certification. Is that from the Institute of Integrated Nutrition? Is that right? Do I have that correct? Yes. I, I know you 
said uh, not dieting or we shouldn't focus too much on dieting. But if someone were to lose weight and wanted to focus on that, or, or maybe it's just a healthy eating plan, are there like three or four steps beyond what you have said to us so far that uh, someone should look for, someone who's, you know, interested in that? Like if they want to lose weight or is that what you're asking? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, I'm not, you know, I'm not really into answers like, well, if you cut carbs, you lose weight. I mean, that's kind of a given. I think we all kind of know that. So I, but I don't think that that works for the long run. I really think that the key, if someone is looking, if their goal is to lose weight, again, the number one key is to not obsess about food because again, that is just releasing physiological hormones, chemicals that will actually keep your weight on and, and negate what you're trying to do. But, you know, beyond that, again, you know, the, the, the greens, rainbow fruits and vegetables, if you're going to consume protein, if you're going to consume animal protein, make sure it comes from a healthy animal. Um, if you're going to consume plant protein, that's anywhere from lentils to kale is actually high in protein. Bro broccoli is high in protein. Legumes are high in protein or they're all meat all there are meat alternatives available out there. You just have to be careful and read the ingredients because a lot of them are processed, very processed, and have a lot of, well, junk in them. I mean, that you're like, what is this? You know, it's not even real food. But there are meat alternatives that do have very few ingredients. And you could look at every single ingredient and go, oh, I know exactly what these things are and I can consume this product. So you have to Make sure you read those ingredient labels if you're going to look at consuming meat alternatives. And then finally, know your source. Know your source of where you're getting your fruits and vegetables, where you're getting your meats, if it's animal meat, animal protein rather. Okay. Um, and then also you want to consume more, manage your fats, meaning consume omega-3, get more omega-3 fatty acids. So Part of today's diet, if you're following the standard American diet or the SAD diet, you're going, you're consuming more omega-9 and which is processed foods, fast foods, things like that. And what that does is causes inflammation, whereas omega-3s inhibit inflammation. So you need, you need to balance, manage your fats is what we call it. Okay. And then manage sugars. So that means not, that means limiting consumption of simple sugars. Have your sweet thing. We all, a lot of people, they, they need their sweet thing every night, whether it's a bite, a square of chocolate or ice cream or whatever. I mean, that's fine. I, I don't think it works to make people stop doing those, those uh, things that they like to do, but just make sure that you are, cons that you're managing your sugars by consuming more complex carbohydrates versus simple sugars such as ice cream, candy bars, things like that. Okay, that's good. And is there any differences that you find in um, trying to lose weight or maintain weight? I mean, do you, do you see a difference between how people should eat when it comes to maintaining weight? I think that's not really, yeah, I think the difference is in how much you consume. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people think they want to debunk it, but I really believe in calories in, calories out. I mean, because the reality is if you're consuming more than you're expending, what's going to happen? I mean, it's, it's just logical. And and while qual, qual, and quality is important because, you know, you can eat a pound of broccoli and it's 200 calories or a Twinkie for 200 calories. I mean, that's a big difference, you know. So you do it, – it's not as simple as, oh, I, you know, I don't have to pay attention to what you're eating. Yeah, you do. But but if you're looking to to maintain or lose, I mean – I'm not a fan of like calorie restriction because you'll go off the deep end. You'll end up binging because you're not eating enough, but you'll know what's right for your body because when you're fueled, you're going to have the energy to be active or do whatever it is that you're doing. But when you're not properly fueled, you're, you're not going to have the energy to be active. You're, you're not going to properly, you're not going to function well mentally or emotionally. So, so yeah, I mean, calories in, calories out to me is the difference. So what about taking things like fish oil or supplements or vitamins? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that when it comes to taking vitamins and supplements, I think that you should treat them as it says, as a supplement. I think that everybody can benefit from taking turmeric. I think that everybody could benefit from taking a good whole food multivitamin. It must be a whole food. And I think that everybody can benefit from taking a good B-complex and a probiotic. 
the probiotic will balance out your gut and the gut bacteria because you have trillions of bacteria in your gut. Right. And those can get knocked off balance from the environment, the air you breathe from if you're, you know, eating food that's not optimal, you know, with optimal nutrition for you. And then of course, you know, and I, as far as a multivitamin, you know, I take, I do take a multivitamin, but off and on, but I also have a pretty good diet. So I really like, again, I, I think that supplements need to be used as a supplement first and foremost food to give you the vitamins and minerals that you're looking for. Okay. Um, I know that you have a skincare line of products. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, I do. I so by day I'm a I'm a wellness director and by night I'm a small business owner. I have had Koi Beauty Bars for about four years now and I have soaps and then I just came out with skincare about a year ago. So the it all started with the fact that I really probably about ten years ago, as I was converting my eating habits from a processed food, you know, junky packaged goods and things like that to a whole foods kitchen. After I switched my kitchen around to, to whole foods, I started to look at skincare and I'm thinking, well, I mean, our skin is the largest organ we have. And, you know, just as we take care to, to, you know, we pay attention to what we're putting in our body, putting in our mouth and our body, we probably need to pay attention to what we're putting on our body because skin is an organ also. And so I just started to read studies about skincare and I started to read skincare products in the grocery store when I'm shopping for food and I pick up a product and I read this label and stuff like that. I started to do the same to skincare. I started to read skincare product labels as, as if they were food items only for my skin. And what I found was a lot of products that looked and sounded good, but they were actually horrible for my skin. And a lot of them tend to create the very problems that people are looking at that product to get rid of, you know, dry skin, itchy, itchy skin, flakiness, things like that. And so I just couldn't find anything that I was willing to put on my skin. And so I created my own using food because I believe, again, I believe that food is medicine, but I believe you need to nourish your skin with food also. So really my, I created three soap bars, superfood soap bars, turmeric, wheatgrass, and purple corn. And those are, those are superfoods I researched for topical use. I mean, like, like we always hear of acai. Oh, acai is so great. Blueberries, things like that. And they are, they're fabulous when you consume them, but not necessarily when you put them topically. They don't really do anything. So these, these three superfoods, I did the research and found that when used topically, they can be just as beneficial as when you consume them. So I chose those three superfoods came out with a really nourishing three, you know, those three formulas of a nourishing soap and have been doing that soap business for about four years. And then, like I said, I came out with skincare about a year ago. And again, it's the same, it's the same scenario where it's all created with a thoughtful blend of herbs, nuts, seeds, food for your skin. I mean, you can eat it. It's not going to taste good, <laughs> but you can eat it. It's that's how quote unquote clean it is. I don't really like to say clean because a lot of people don't know what that means, but it just means that there's not preservatives, um, artificial colors and um, artificial preservatives, because just like food can have those items or excuse me, food can carry those ingredients. And a lot of people are allergic to food colors and preservatives and fragrances. Well, fragrances isn't necessarily in food, but, but people can have the same reactions in skincare that have preservatives, artificial colors and fragrances. So, uh, so they're made with, with just whole foods. And I, and again, I created it all because I couldn't, there wasn't anything that I was willing to put on my skin. And that's how it all started. So what were the three superfoods that you use? Turmeric? Turmeric is one, purple corn and wheatgrass. Purple corn. I'm, I'm not really sure what purple corn is. That's not like the corn that you see that's decorative at Thanksgiving, is it? It is. Um, it purple is. corn, yeah, purple corn is actually from the, from Peru and it's actually used, it has, it's incredibly high in antioxidants more so than even blueberries. So remember how I said that earlier when you want to get a rainbow, rainbow of fruits and vegetables, cause each of those colors represent an antioxidant and the, yeah. Anti, the, yeah, the, the antioxidant in blue and purple is anthocyanin. And so the purple corn is high in anthocyanin. And so what that helps is with is wrinkles and sagging skin. I should buy a bat. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking notes here. <laughs> 
But when consumed, it's actually an incredibly powerful immune system support. When it's consumed uh, in a tea, actually, is typically what they will do with it is create a tea. Huh. Okay, so it's not like something we would go and buy corn that's purple and eat it. No, I don't. I don't even know if that's possible, to be honest. Right. So, and the turmeric, I have heard as a inflammation stopper, like for gout and things like that, to take turmeric. So with mm-hmm. your soaps, you put that on the skin, and it, turmeric also is for the um, the wrinkles, and or is that a different approach? The turmeric it, soap. It can, it can, but it's it's definitely going to be most resourceful when it comes to inflammation of the skin. So things like acne, acne, dermatitis, mm-hmm. uh, you know, itchiness, redness, eczema, nice. things like that. Oh, you know, I just. I just was at the dermatologist because I have this horrible skin thing going on right now. And I just spent $200 on some weird shampoo thing. I should have just bought your soap and tried that first. (laughs) Yeah. Well, if it's what I'm thinking, um, yeah, the turmeric, because I'm very familiar with a shampoo that's $200. Okay. And what that would be for. But, yeah, the turmeric soap, I actually have have a customer, a male customer who has a lot of scalp problems and he for years he's used Denerex and I'm not sure what made him do it, but he had a turmeric soap and he used it as shampoo and he, now he uses my soap as shampoo and not Denerex. <laughs> oh, okay. So, All right. Yeah. It's just, and it's not to say that none of that prescription and stuff doesn't work. That's not it at all. It's just a lot of it is very harsh. Right. And while it will solve that problem for the moment, it, typically will cause another one because it's severely dried something out or, you know, paralyzed some other healthy part of your body. I mean, what my, what I, my aim has been for skincare is to support your body's natural systems. And it's not to say that there's parts of our body that doesn't go haywire because it happens. You know, those are usually called autoimmune diseases. And, and I make no claims that my stuff is medicinal in any kind of way, but I, it, but I've just had testimonial for testimonial customers who have had a lot of skin problems be cleared up, you know? So it's been really kind of this this cool thing that that has come out of it beyond what I ever thought it would be. I was just trying to put out some good skincare and that was, you know, reasonable in price and, you know, some things that are natural and organic are just outrageously expensive. And uh, I just wanted to people to have access to good quality skincare. And so it's been kind of cool to see some of these other little problems be cleared up. That's great. That is, that's, that's great. And you said it's Koi, Beauty Bar? Yes, KoiBeautyBar.com. And Koi is K-O-I? K-O-I, yep. Koi, Koi Gourmet Skincare. But the website is KoiBeautyBar.com. So, Heather, we've made it to the lightning round. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to ask you just a few quick questions, and you can give a quick answer or, or not. You can elaborate if you want. Okay. Okay. Strength or cardio? Strength. Vegan or keto? Vegan. The gym or park? Park. Eggs or oatmeal? Oatmeal. Treadmill or elliptical? Treadmill. Wine or beer? Wine. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Okay, if you drink coffee, do you put butter in your coffee? Oh, no, that's disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) No, I drink it black. (laughs) Bread? Bread, yes or no? Yes. And uh, last question. Have you read an interesting book lately? I have. I am currently reading Missing Peace, which is 11 Secrets to Restore Inner Harmony with Your Food, Body, and Health. Oh, wow. That's certainly appropriate. That yeah, sounds like it's a, a, yeah, a local author. Well, local to me, Brexville, Ohio. And she's actually, uh, her name is Melanie Jatsik. She's the author. She's a RDLD. And she actually is the chief registered dietitian for the local grocery store that I work for. And uh, yeah, so she consults with us and she, she left us as a a full-time employee to write this book. And so she's doing like a speaking tour and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just something that she felt was her life's work. And, you know, she, she shares, you know, 11 guidelines that, that uh, call attention to and correct self-defeating thoughts and behaviors and, and choices that keep us from 
accessing peace and health and well-being. So it's a pretty, pretty awesome book. I highly recommend it. Okay. And it's Great. missing peace, like P-E-A-C-E. Okay, okay. Yeah. Not like a puzzle piece. That's what I was picturing yeah. at first when you said it. I thought it was um, a different, like a piece of, yeah. you know, something. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Gosh, well, thank you so much for sharing all your information with us, Heather. This has really been enlightening. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It's been great. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Well, we will hopefully talk to you soon, and I'm going to check out the um, soap. Oh, yeah, that okay. sounds great. We'll put a link yeah. <laughs> on our show notes. Can you give me that, the K-O-I? Yep, KoiBeautyBar.com. Do you want anyone to connect with you at all on social media? Do you have like uh, Twitter that you're trying to build or anything like that? I have, yeah, there's, I have a Koi Beauty Bar Facebook and then I have a Koi Beauty Bar uh, Instagram. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, Heather. This has been really helpful. Really great. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the yeah, pretty invite. It. It's been fun. It has. Good. Good. Boy, that was a great episode. I really enjoyed hearing from Heather about her thoughts on eating and what we put in our body as well as on our body. Yes. Thanks so much, Heather. That was great. I really enjoyed it. So don't forget, everyone who's listening, that we have a giveaway. Heather talked about her Koi Gourmet skincare products, and so today we have a wheatgrass cleansing bar that if you leave us a message on our website or leave us a voicemail, that number is 330-970-6662. You can also find a link on our website for that number. Anyway, leave us a message either on the website or in the voicemail, and we will pick a winner. Yeah, by the end of December. You've got to get that in by the end of December. Right. Leave us the message or post by the end of December 2018, and we will announce the lucky winner in a January episode. That's really cool. Thanks so much for doing that, Jill. I think that's really fun. And please join us for our next episode when we do a wrap-up of 2018. Can you believe it will be a year of publishing our podcast? Woohoo! <laughs> That's really exciting. Yeah. It is. So I hope everyone will join us both for our, our year-end episode and for 2019 episodes. Be sure to tell a friend and subscribe to the Becoming Ellie podcast for Fit Strong Women Over 50. See you next time.